course, a pretty sobering day if you're in Melbourne. I mean, you've got the extension of the state of emergency powers. And sort of... Essentially being accused of being corrupt and we've lost the grand final. There's sort of the great trifecta uh, of all time of bad news for Victorians. The extension of the state of emergency powers for the government just sends a terrible signal to the community and to business that the state will remain closed for business. It's not going to be open for investment. Um, who would invest in a state of emergency? And the first rule of dealing in a crisis, which is what Victoria is in now, is that you stop digging. But it seems that, unfortunately, the Victorian government is just keeping digging and uh, it's going to make the Victorian recovery a very hard one, a very long one, a very protracted one. Um, the estimates are that by the end of December, 60% of people, you know, the two and a quarter, two and... 2.2 million people who will be on JobKeeper by then, 60% of them will yeah. be in Victoria. That just tells you all the all that you need to hear in that one statistic. Victoria is in a very dark, bleak place. Yeah. Uh, and we talk about uh, a, a few different things here, Innes. First of all, uh, and, and you did sort of mention that there, it's all about the, the Premier's announcement on Sunday, the roadmap out. Uh, how are negotiations and conversations between the Premier's Department and the business community going? Well, Pete, they, they started uh, a, a couple of days ago and that's largely been around trying to work through with business sort of the conditions under which business can operate. And I've got to be honest, a lot of this isn't news to business. Uh, businesses have had COVID plans from the start from back in March. They've been practising social distancing and tens of thousands of businesses that weren't, well, didn't have COVID cases were shut down. So what the government is saying that business needs to do is largely what business has been doing already. And, you know, we're talking about traffic lights for business. The one traffic light Victorian business needs is the green light to get going again. And, uh, and we haven't seen that yet. And that's what we're all waiting to yeah. see and until we get that green light you know victoria victorian shops will remain shuttered and, and businesses will remain closed and i think everyone just wants to get back to work uh, that's the important yeah. that's the important thing here so has, has the the premier been open to consultation uh, what 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 sort of plan is the business community offering up that's maybe different to to what had been in the past well, what we've been talk what the business community has been doing is been talking to various ministers, primarily Martin Pakula, the uh, the jobs minister, uh, about trying to get uh, a program going so that potentially things can open up. But what we're missing here, uh, Pete, is the big picture. Uh, what is the government going to do to get the economy moving again? Where, where is the spark going to come from for Victoria to get things moving? Are they thinking about things like payroll tax holidays? What incentives are they looking at for business? How are they going to get young people back into the work workplace? All of these things government can give direction to, but until they give direction, business is sort of yeah. stuck, and that's what we need. So we need that big-picture plan. We need the plan uh, to get the state going again, but um, so far there isn't anything there. We, we want to engage around those sort of issues and have input, but... Uh, the conversations haven't got that far yet. And what about up in Queensland, Innes? I mean, what, are, what is the business community saying up there? I mean, the Prime Minister, as we know, he wants to get things going. He wants people to be able to travel interstate by Christmas. But Anastasia Palaszczuk, she's got the heels dug in. She's, she's immovable on this one. What sort of an impact is that going to have up there? Well, this is, you know, another two months, basically. It looks like a border closure in, in Queensland. Um, you know, we all know they've got an election at the end of October, so people can draw their own conclusions around that. But business has been saying for a very long time now, for months, that border closures restrict the movement of people and goods. It, it really hinders economic activity. And until those borders are open, we will still see constrained uh, economic activity. You'll see dislocation between families. You'll see kids not being able to get to school. Uh, you'll see the terrible medical emergencies that we've seen. And the economic damage of all this will linger for a long time. So. We see unemployment nationally over 10%. Today, as we all know, we officially go into recession. You know, that's pretty sobering news, but it's old news, really. It's from June, and since then, the economy has gone into another downturn and border closures, keeping um, communities locked away from each other, businesses locked away from customers, just means that the economic hardship goes on. We need to get the borders open again with appropriate controls. Mm -hmm. 
but get them open again so we can get moving again. And just finally, we're about to go to the AFL. Innes, uh, if the MCG didn't get the final, are you happy that the Gabba got it? <laughs> uh, I think you're a Queenslander, so you're probably, <laughs> yeah, right. you're probably happy. <laughs> Look, it's a pretty sad day for Victoria, the first time ever, and to see the Premiership Cup fly out last night was just another hammer blow for the state and uh, we want it back as quickly as possible so don't get too comfortable it's with just, it up it's there done. but enjoy it while you've got it's it. It's just a one-off. It's just a one-off, I think. Yeah. Innes Willocks, appreciate your time this